Well, hello again. Dr. Scott Stevens here. In two of our earlier videos, we discussed the idea of a cumulative distribution and also the idea of a frequency polygon. Today we're going to combine those two ideas in a pretty simple way to create one more kind of graph that you're responsible for with a rather weird name. It's called an ogive. It's pronounced ogive and spelled O-G-I-V-E. It's not a word that I like very much. No one's sure where it came from other than Old French, but it probably came from ogari, meaning increasing in Latin. Anyway, it's a word that we're stuck with, but it means nothing more than a cumulative relative frequency distribution graph. Cumulative means it's a running total, and relative means it's a percent. Now sometimes people will make a graph based on what's less than or equal to a cutoff, and sometimes what's less than a cutoff. I'm going to do the less than or equal to kind here, although your book does the less than. At the very end we'll take a look and see how these things differ. Alright, I've got the data over here for the exam 1 scores of my previous COB191 class, how they did out of 100 points on exam 1. And as you can see there's data here for about 68 people. So the first thing I need to do is to create a frequency distribution for this, and you can do that using either the histogram video that I showed you, or the histogram spreadsheet that I talked to you about, or doing it the way that I did before by using that very handy tool, the pivot table. That's what I'm going to do here. So I'll insert a pivot table. Remember that to use this, each column of your data has to have a heading. Here I have a heading here for this column, there's no problem there, I'll highlight all the data. And I'll say go ahead and put it in a new worksheet, so we can see what it looks like over there. And here's the new sheet. This is the kind of thing that we saw before. Over here are the list of all the variables that we've got. There's only one because there was only one column. And just like last time, I'm going to drag that down to the rows label and also drag it down to the values label like that. And just like last time, it's telling me the sum of the exam one scores. So for example, if I took everybody who got a 65 and added all of their scores together, the total number of points would be 260. That's really not very useful, of course. I want to know how many people got each score. So I'll do what I did last time. Go down here to the Values box, click, choose Value Field Settings, which is really the only thing you'll ever use off of this menu, and then choose Count, like we did before. Now if I do this, I end up with a frequency table for each score, how many people got it. I could have also gathered things together, like everybody in the 50s, everybody in the 60s, and so on, using the grouping option that I discussed in the histogram video. Today, I'm not going to do that because there aren't that many different scores. But I don't want frequency, I want relative frequency. So, back to this box again, go to Value Field Settings, go to Show Values As this time, and I'm going to express it as a percent of the grand total. There, that's better. So 1.47% of my students got a 50 on the exam, and 2.94% got a 92 and a half. Close, but still not what I want. This is relative frequency, but it's not cumulative relative frequency. It's not keeping a running total. So one more time, back to the values box, back to the field settings, back to the show values as tab, and if I scroll down a bit further, I'll see one that says percent running total in. Aha, that's what I want. We'll click on that. And finally, we have what we want. 1.47% of my students got 50 or less. 80% of my students got 82 and a half or less. 100% of my students got a 92 and a half or less. That is, 92 and a half was the highest score on the test. I want to take these numbers and turn them into a graph. Sometimes Excel gets a little upset if you mess with the numbers exactly inside a pivot table. So I'm going to hit Control C to make a copy of them. Control V to paste them over here. And I'll make some headings here. Here's the score. And here's the relative cumulative frequency. I'll point out that this is a less than or equal to value here, because as I told you, sometimes people talk about how many people got less than 60, but this one talks about how many people got less than or equal to 60. And because that's a little ambiguous, I'd like to include it in my label. I'm going to do one more thing, too. A, a, an ogive, the kind of graph that we're creating, should always stop at 100, but it should always start at 0. So I'm going to put one more row at the beginning here. I'll highlight everything and go to the border of the box, not a corner, but the border, and you'll see that fat cross turn into a skinny one. I can just drag down then and put one more row. Uh, let's see, let's say 47.5, which would be the next category down, and a cumulative relative frequency of 0. If I wanted to make things look nice, I could align them all to the right, for example. So let's go ahead and do that. Now let's make a graph. I could do this as a line graph, but it's actually better for a number of reasons, maybe you can think about why, to do it as a scatter plot instead. So I'll go to Insert, choose the scatter plot, which is this one down here, and connect these points with straight lines. There we go. 
We're looking pretty much like an ogive, although it could be cleaned up a bit. Notice that the less than or equal to turned into a less than. Let's put that equal to there again by using the underline. The numbers don't need to go all the way down to zero. Let's go ahead and fix this axis, formatting the axis to make its smallest value 45. Okay, which is the small, actually, I guess, uh, yeah, 45, 47 and a half was the smallest in our table. 45 is okay. Minimum, 45. Maximum, 100. That's fine. Uh, on the vertical axis, I'd really like to have things expressed as percentages, and there's no reason to go up to 120%. 100% is fine. The number which should be expressed as a percentage, not as a general form, percentage, number of decimal places for my axis, I don't need any. So it's looking better now. I could certainly clean it up a bit more. For example, on the vertical axis, I could write cumulative relative frequency. On the horizontal axis, I could write score. I could specify this was about test grades on exam one up here. We did that in another video, so to save you some time, I'm not going to do that right now. But I do want to highlight something else that you can do with these charts, which is very important, more important than you might think. Notice that the graph tells me, for example, that 20% of the students got about a 65 or less, and that 90% of the students got about uh, an 85 or less. In fact, I, the average on this test was a 75, but you can see that actually almost 60% of the students got a 75 or less. But suppose I wanted to know how many students got a grade between 65 and 85. Well, this is 65 or less. How much did it grow by the time we got to 85 or less? The height here is 90%, the height here is 20%, and the difference between those two is about 70%, which means that about 70% of the students had grades that were bigger than 65, but were less than or equal to 85. The reason I use the specific words that I did are because this is a less than or equal to ogive. Let's unpack this a little further. We said from this observation that about 90% of all students got an 85% or less. That's less than or equal to. But from that, we're removing the 20% of the students that got a 65 or less. That is, we're subtracting off the people who got an exactly a 65. What's left? 70% of the people in between who got more than 65 but less than or equal to 85. If this were a less than ogive, you can figure it out, the same thing would be at least 65, but less than 85. See if you can make that make sense. For me, less than or equal to is an easier thing to interpret, and your textbook seems to think so too, because that's what it used. But you may see a less than ogive, so make sure you can handle both kinds. Play around with this, because this skill set of being able to look at the difference of two values and interpret what it means will be an essential one when we get to Chapter 5.